Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making an ellipse drawing jig. Well, if you remember on last week's show, we had a fun little project making a smoke grinder. And I said that there was a practical use for it, and there is. And what that is, is basically drawing ellipses. Now, if you were to take a pencil and put it on the end of that arm and run it around as you were playing with the smoke grinder, you would end up drawing an ellipse. And that is quite useful for several projects. And uh, what I'm going to do today, for those of you who did not watch that show last week, is we're actually going to start from fresh making the jig. And it's basically the same process as the smoke grinder. Well, because this is a jig, we're going to be making it out of plywood. So the first piece we're going to need is a square of three quarter inch plywood, and we're going to be cutting it to a dimension of four and one eighth by four and one eighth. Well, we have our four and one eighth inch square of plywood here in the vise. And our first step that we need to do is mark our center of this board. So we're gonna mark this here at two and a sixteenth. And once we get that marked, we'll just square across the board, just like this. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be routing out a dovetail groove in all four sides of this piece of plywood and we're going to be using a 14 degree dovetail bit. It's going to be half an inch deep and at the base of our um, groove, our dovetail, it will be five eighths of an inch wide. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark our half inch for our depth of our router bit groove. And then we're going to mark on that line our 5 eighths of an inch centered on our center line. So there's right there 5 sixteenths and then 5 sixteenths and this will give us our width now of 5 eighths of an inch. We're then going to take our little protractor here and set it to 14 degrees and we're just going to draw a line here just like this and <clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfect this is just something for us to be able to set up the table saw because what we're going to do in essence is use the table saw to nibble out the majority of this material and that will be our next step in this jig. So now that we have our rough marks done, let's head over to the table saw and do the rough out of this particular groove. Well, I've got the blade set here now to 14 degree tilt, and I'm just setting the fence so that the blade strikes just inside the line. The whole purpose of this is, as I said before, to basically chip out the material to ease up on the work that the router blade has to do. Now the blade here is set for a 7 16th of an inch height, so it's just below our half inch depth. So after the first pass, we spin it 180 degrees and run it through for a second pass, and then it's just a matter of flipping it 90 degrees and this will take care of the groove on the opposite side or the adjacent side that we just finished doing. So here I should have actually turned this 180 degrees, but for some reason I only went 90 and well, stuff happens. But now it's time to move the fence and we're gonna shift it just a touch so that the blade comes inside just a little further to take away some more of that core material. 
and it's just a matter of another four passes and rotating at 90 degrees each time. Now you can see there that that's the spot where I didn't spin it where I should have, but that's okay. The router bit will take care of it. We are taking away most of the material. And then basically when you get all of the passes done, you are pretty much ready at that point in time to head over to the router table. At the router table, I've got a auxiliary fence installed and clamped to the original fence. The only purpose of this is just to keep the stock from falling into the gap in the split fence of the router table. Now with the dovetail bit set at one half inch height, I'm just running it through the grooves that were previously cut uh, with the table saw to uh, hack out the majority of the material and we're rotating after each pass 180 degrees just to finish it off and make sure that the slot is perfectly centered. Then once that one is done, we rotate at 90 degrees and run it through for a single pass. And once that one is done, then we're gonna end up rotating it another 180 degrees in order to finish it off and center this particular dovetail groove. And once that is done, your grooves are pretty much cut and you can take your project over to the bench to finish up the rest of the works on it. Well, now that you have your grooves cut, you should have two centered dovetails just like this. And the next step is fairly easy. You're going to want some hardwood. Now, in this case, it's a scrap of walnut and this is 9 sixteenths of an inch thick. Now the reason that measurement is important is because our routed groove or our routed dovetail is a half an inch deep and we want our riders or our sliders that are going to run in these slots, we want them to stick up above the surface of this jig at least a sixteenth of an inch. So half inch plus one sixteenths, nine sixteenths thick. We've also cut one side here to a bevel of 14 degrees, and that coincides with the 14 degrees of our router bit. Now, we've marked the width of our groove here because it may not be exactly 5 eighths of an inch at this point in time. We've marked that on the end of our stock right here, and I'm gonna take it over to the table saw and cut the mating 14 degree bevel on this side in order to make the stock for our sliders. And there we have our stock for our slider with our 14 degree bevel on either side and you just want to test it to make sure that it fits in your slots. Now you want it to be a little snug, but you don't want it to have a lot of resistance. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, but not a lot. It slides nicely in the slot here. And now you want two lengths of that particular stock, and we're going to cut them to two and a quarter inches long. The next thing we're going to need is some inch and a quarter long bolts with a 1032 thread and I have a couple of wing nuts for them as well. So for our sliders now, right in the middle of the slider, we want to drill a 330 seconds or sorry, a 316 through hole right through the middle and we're going to countersink the bottom so that the head of these bolts can sit flush or even a little recessed into this pocket here. So you've got the 3 16 through hole and the counter bore here for the head of the 1032 bolt. Just put a drop of CA on the underside of the head, pull it through and glue it in place so that you have something that looks like that. The next piece that you're going to need is the arm in order to draw the ellipses. And what we're going to use is a half inch thick piece of maple and we're going to use our inquiry rule to mark out a half inch thick width right down the middle there just like that and we're going to make the entire arm 12 inches long but while we have it here clamped in at the longer length we'll do some layout 
So mark yourself a center line at a quarter inch all the way through this piece and now cut it so that it's half an inch wide and 12 inches long. So you've got your piece cut at three quarters of an inch back from the one end. You want to drill a hole big enough to house a pencil. Now I've tested this pencil, it's 930 seconds in diameter. So we're going to drill a 930 second hole right down through the top of this three quarters of an inch in from the end. As well, at a quarter of an inch in from the end, we're gonna drill a through hole, 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, centered on our half inch plane here, but a quarter of an inch back. Well, the hole for the pencil actually ended up being 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and our 3 sixteenths hole here in the end will house yet another 10 30 second um, bolt with a wing nut. So this center line that you drew here now, we need to take this over to the scroll saw or the band saw and just rip it along that line until we get into the center here where our pencil goes. Well, now that you have that slot cut, you can put your wing nut through, number 10 washer on the end of it with your wing nut. And what this does is when your pencil is in, in the drawing arm, just like this, you can tighten down your wing nut. And uh, hopefully, if you've cut your slot wide enough, it'll secure your pencil in there so that while you're drawing, it's not moving. So the next thing you want to do now is measure back from the pencil edge here back half an inch and we want to drill 3 16 inch holes all the way along here in half inch increments. And with all of those 3 16 of an inch diameter holes drilled, that is it. This is all the parts for the jig and I'll just show you how it works. I've got a piece of quarter inch hardboard here and I have the base plate double side uh, taped to this piece here of hardboard, you just want to slide your sliders with your bolts into opposite grooves and then you just take this section of your jig, your drawing arm, and choose which holes you want to place it into. Depending on what holes you use, the size of your ellipse changes. Now those holes might be a little tight when you first start using them, but that's okay. A number 10 washer and a wing nut will secure everything in place so that it doesn't move on you. And now you just want to adjust the height of your pencil, tighten it up, and now you're ready to draw your ellipse. And it's just a matter of moving the jig around like this. And you can see here I've got the ellipse arm too tight because it's going to hit the side of our jig. So you'll need to adjust it. And that's not a big deal when you can just take off the wing nuts and move your arm out a little bit. There's a bit of uh, a learning curve on the jig and you'll have to make several adjustments. And here I've adjusted the holes that I'm using for the elliptical jig. And again, it's just a matter now of running your pencil around, allowing the glides to do their job in the tracks and you can get your elliptical drawn. Hopefully that's being uh, translated to the camera here, but I'll change some positions of the arms and draw a few more. Depending on which hole you put these in for this axis and this axis, you can change the width of your uh, ellipse and you can change the length. So I'm gonna do a few more here and I'll film while I'm doing it. And uh, that's basically your ellipse jig. Now by leaving the one slider in the same hole and moving this one in one hole, we're able to change the width of our ellipse, but not the length. And again, you can just continue to adjust depending on the size of the ellipse that you want.
Now, truth be told, I've shortened up these glides here on some of the settings they were hitting each other. So I shortened them up and you can shorten yours up too if you need it to draw a different size uh, ellipse. Just shorten them up a bit and everything's fine as long as they still run smoothly in the track. And there you have it, an ellipse drawing jig. Guys, this is a great jig anytime you need to draw an ellipse for a certain project, whether it be, well, I don't know, maybe like next week's project, which you'll have to join me for if you want to see what it is that I'm using this jig for. So from the smoke grinder toy, turning that project into an ellipse drawing jig, hopefully you're going to join me next week and see where this jig takes us with the next project. Now, there's a, quite a bit of fiddling around with the different uh, settings of this jig and all of those half inch holes or the half inch spaced holes are not really necessary and some of them are actually obsolete, but I was just trying to sort of drill them all just to kill it and you know get it over with so you may want to switch yours up and who knows maybe put your holes an inch apart so there's not that much of an adjustment something else i would suggest is you may want to number those holes and if at some point in time for say a certain project you know that you had one axis in hole number three and one axis in hole number six you can scribble that down in your little shop notes book and you can get repeatable results with that jig. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. I hope you're gonna to try to make this jig for yourself, and I hope you're gonna join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.